Welcome, I'm Absentian, and this is part one of five of my series this week, all commemorating clowns in movies. This is to lead up to the 8th, which is going to be the release of the new IT movie. So, first movie this week is going to be Blood Harvest, which is also known as Nightmare, from 1987. Um, I'm going to, if that's incorrect, I'll put the correction up on screen. Which is a very odd movie, I gotta say. It's not the best, but it's very odd. And it's the first one I've seen where it has the singer named Tiny Tim in it. And if you don't know who Tiny Tim is, I'm gonna play a little clip right now of his singing capability. So this movie follows Jill as she returns to her family home. Her father is a banker who is currently foreclosing on homes for a lot of the farmers in the small town they live in. So things are a little bit tense because a lot of these farmers' homes are being foreclosed on. And her father, of course, is the one doing that. So she gets home and both her parents are missing. That seems strange, yes, but with how the tension of the town is at that moment, she doesn't seem to be too worried. She wants to try and see if they'll return, if they maybe left for a moment, to kind of regain composure because of the tensions from the town between them and the town. Now, her childhood friend Gary and his brother, Marvel, are still around the house, so they are kind of watching over her while she's there because the town is still very um, angry toward her family, so there's a lot of vandalism, and she is being harassed throughout the whole film. But the thing is, is that there's this constant feeling that the two brothers have something to hide, and one of the brothers has become a clown. He's been totally out of it since the trauma of the two brothers losing their parents. And he calls himself Marvelous Marvel now. And this he this character is played by Tiny Tim. Which is very odd. Trust me. So that's what kind of makes this movie so fascinating, I gotta say. Now this movie has a lot of issues. And the primary extreme issues are the fact that just about all the acting is absolutely atrocious. Everything is so flat. None of the characters really emote properly. Hell, we even have one scene where it seems like Jill is afraid of a swing set outside. There's someone sitting on the swing outside and she doesn't know who the hell it is. And her boyfriend from back in college calls and she's trying to get comfort from him. But, like, she delivers her lines just so matter of fact. It's not that she's, she doesn't feel scared at all. And then he's just standard, just, oh, I'm going to read off this page. Tell me what's wrong. My folks are gone. Nobody has seen them since the auction. Somebody threw a brick through our window. And now there's somebody outside. What are you talking about? Scott, I'm frightened. It just totally doesn't work. And just about all the characters are absolutely flat. There is nothing really endearing about any of them. It's either they're not emoting at all, or they overdo it. And so that's one of the bigger issues on that. And then we have camera work, which is very shoddy, just simple, like, hey, this action's happening over here, let's point the camera there. Or, hey, this main character should be naked, so, well, let's get her naked. So that's one of the primary things, is that Jill just, for some reason, loses her clothes in many different situations, whether it's by her own hands or other people's hands. It's just, okay, this movie's boring, so let's show some breasts. That's basically all I can really get from that. And then the editing as well was very hard to work with. It's, it got a little bit better toward the end, but the initial sequences were very sharply cut, and there there's some points where it's just there's no logic to why the edits occurred. Like one of the sequences is Gary, one of the brothers, and Jill goes out to a treehouse they built. You see a scene of them walking out to the treehouse, and then suddenly there's a cut to Marvo, who's praying in a church. There's absolutely no connection between these two scenes at all. And then Marvel's scene cuts back to Gary and Jill in the treehouse, or going up into the treehouse. 
absolutely no reason for these two scenes to be these two areas to be interconnected because there's no information that is shared between them and this occurs a few times throughout the film so it's definitely not something that was just a one-off it's been it was constant throughout it toward the end they kind of got a little bit better but no nah, it was bad all the way through there now the thing is even with all these really major issues this movie kept me watching mainly because of Tiny Tim, because his voice was part of the soundtrack. He had some songs that he sang through the soundtrack, which just was so weird because his singing style is very different, and it just adds this weird vibe to the film, as well as his acting in general, because he is, I would say, eccentric, because he just does his own thing. Every time the camera is focused on him, he's just almost in his own little world, which kind of actually works for his character. Well, I can't hide the truth for myself. Whatever happens, I must go on acting, acting, acting. Be a polyarch of love. <laughs> Claude, love. Which is the thing, because he is the only character that actually feels like a character in this film. Everyone else is very flat, but any time the camera's on him, it's understandable why he's acting this way. He is dressed as a clown. It is already known that he is off, and he just acts so strange when he's in front of the camera that it just works. And then you add in his strange soundtrack that kind of made the movie feel more watchable because of this. And then the story is actually not too bad. I gotta say, like, pulling away the bad acting and things like that, it's actually a pretty good story. Then also, the practical effects were actually pretty amazing. There wasn't that many actual on-screen deaths, but there was a few impalings and there was a few throats cut. And the practical effects for those deaths were actually really good. I couldn't really see any seam, like someone's hand got like stuck against a railing, and you see the arrow going through the back of the hand, and it's pretty seamless. You don't see, even though it's a bare, mostly bare arm, you don't see a seam where the practical effects end and real skin begin, so I gotta applaud them for that. So that was some good stuff there. So in the end, Blood Harvest, Something to watch only if you're interested in bad films and possibly a fan of Tiny Tim as a singer and want to see him. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.